Hello, Tony. Hello, how are you? We are here at Synthfest, yep. and uh, you are here with exclusively Analog, right? That's correct, so yes. So is, is this your company? Uh, yeah, basically it was uh, started back in 1992, um, a sort of hobby come small company uh, specializing in analog equipment, hence the name exclusively analog, not working on the digital things. Um, so yeah, I look all sorts of analog synthesizers st stretching way back, way before then working on analog synths. But uh, I specialized then at repairing the old analog gear, but then I had this project to recreate the EMU modular system. Uh, so, so is that, and that's what we've got in front of us here. So, well, basically, what you have here is um, I, I, what I had was a load of uh, submodules, original submodules, and some of the original circuit boards. But I didn't have all the front panels. Um, so, basically, back in 2011, I finally had some time, and I recreated all the panels. Um, I talked to Dave Rosen, the, the original Mr. Emu man, um, got his approval, and then worked through that and basically recreated this. So what you have here is basically, it's an e Emu um, modular in terms of it has original circuitry with new panels and some new circuit boards, but the circuitry behind this is as per Emu, apart from one module, which is my own, which is this one, which is just a, a dual um, low-frequency oscillator and a couple of other bits and pieces. But everything else here is as per EMU. So all the oscillators, the filters, everything about that circuitry is EMU. Um, so then what happened is because of the difficulty of getting hold of some of the parts, we're talking 1970s. 1972 was, in fact, the, when they started this. And some of those transistors are seriously difficult to get hold of. But that's part of the sound. So I sat down and I discussed with Dave Rosman and said, look, if you were to progress on, what would you want to do? And he said, well, I want to use some of the more modern stuff to make life easier without deterring the sound. And Dave Rosman is well known for being the man behind the SSM filter chips, which are used extensively. Um, and he, in the later modules, used SSM chips. So what I've done is taken some of that and gone, OK, I'm going to recreate the look of the EMU system with the sound, but with all new modules. So what you have in this, so this I called the Pioneer Tribute, the old one, it's a tribute to Dave Rosam and the, and the EMU team. This is now the Pioneer, where basically I've designed new oscillators based around Curtis chips, which are more stable and have more capability for all the oscillator part. The filter can be the original low pass filter, but improved because it's got um, now, the resonance or the Q can be controlled. Um, the envelope generators use Curtis chips again because they're, they're easier to do. So I've got a new design, just dual envelope generator, as well as looking exactly the same as the original, the delayed dual envelope generator. The VCA is the same circuitry. It's, it's a fairly basic uh, voltage controlled amplifier, but all on one circuit board now. And then I built some additional dual um, VCAs the really nice module is the Universal Active Filter, which is a lot of people say on the EMU was one of the best filters ever, and it is very powerful. So I've redesigned that slightly, but it, if you compare them, there's, in fact, people have said, well, they're the same. They are basically the same. Um, so do, but, do, you, uh, do you have an original EMU system? Is that how you're able not, to kind of like Not all an of original. Them? Um, I've worked on original systems. I've helped uh, because I've recreated the original submodules. I've actually been able to repair some original systems. Um, but I did at one point have an original system. It's a bit of a long story. That's how this whole thing started. Um, short story is somebody told me that there was a modular system for sale in a pawn shop in Madison, Wisconsin. When I phoned them, they couldn't tell me what it was. They just said it looks like a home-built thing. I paid $250 for it, and I ended up with this cabinet with all original EMU modules and a keyboard. Wow, result. $250, uh, and it worked. I had to repair the keyboard. That subsequently uh, got sold to a musician and ended up in a museum. But the long story is, two years ago, I got the cabinet back. Nice. So I built this into that cabinet. I had a, a different cabinet for that. But um, I've worked on uh, some quite well-known musicians and producers have EMU modular systems, and I've helped um, 
you know, rebuild those. That's how I got this cabinet, actually, because um, one producer bought the system, but took the modules out and put it in his big cabinet. So I ended up with this cabinet back again. Um, so, yes. So, um, um, I noticed there's, there's actually not that many patch cables going on. So is there some normalization? Yes. Right. The whole beauty of the EMU system is, in fact, um, to run the system, I mean, I've only got these cables in because the oscillators, these oscillators have a multiple choices and you have a mixer. So these two oscillators are already patched into here. So this is just, that's the only, I could put a, a, a lead into that, but I've left that as a, a choice. The, this goes through to the, the filter, then it's pre-patched through to the VCA. The envelope generators are pre-patched into the inputs so one goes to here, one goes to the VCA. So there's in the back, there's a whole load of pre-patching you can do. So basically, you can turn the system on with nothing plugged in, and it'll still work. It'll still operate. So you just feed from the, the CB and gate inputs, and they're already patched up to feed the oscillators. You just switch them in as you want between channel one or channel two. Um, so the beauty of it is it's a clean system, but you can override. Any time you plug into one of these sockets, you override. So instantly, it makes a difference. Um, so uh, you've got a bit of a patch going. Should we just hear a bit of it yeah. then? Yeah, let me just switch it on. So that's the system running. The drums obviously aren't the EMU system. So, uh, if people want to know more about it, where do they go? What, how, how can they find um, out more about it? Uh, well, it's a case of, um, they can go to the website, which is www.exclusivelyanalog, which is the English spelling of analog, not the American, uh, .com. Um, look it up. If you, just, if you Google exclusively analog, then you'll come up and find the website. There's more details there and contact details. Um, so, that's one way. Um, one of the things, People ask me, why have you called it exclusively analog? Um, two reasons. One is that basically I concentrate on the analog aspect, but also this is not mass produced. Every single system that is built, and that stretches back to some of the stuff I did before uh, called the Aviator, um, everything is hand built, so it's very limited numbers. Uh, for instance, I have built some more of the tribute systems. There are only eight of them in existence that uh, various musicians have got. Um, and then this is number one of the, the Pioneer system. Um, but these I can produce relatively easily. These are difficult because of the, the difficulty in getting the original parts. Um, so th this is, these can be built to order. Um, and that's how I work it. It's not a case of, right, I'm sending to a, somewhere in China, build me a thousand. These are all hand built. Um, Excellent. So that's the exclusive part as well. They're not something that everybody's going to have. Amazing. Well, Tony, thank you very much. Pleasure.